This is Kieran with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze. Now, if you haven't listened to Avoid the Maze in the past, well, welcome today, because I have a great guest on with me. And before I introduce her, I'm just going to ask you, do you feel like you are being bogged down by things that you heard years ago, did years ago, or somebody put on your shoulder years ago. I know I still have those little voices talking in my head, but today I have, and I hope Donna, I don't mispronounce your last name, Donna Tejan? Tashjan. Tashjan. Okay. Um, I apologize for that. I don't even pronounce my last name right. So uh, <laughs> welcome. But Thank you. It's my pleasure. So I met Donna on um, a group called podmatch.com. Uh, and most of us who are podcasters, that's where we get to meet. It's almost like a dating site. Um, <laughs> and what I love about it is that for the last year and a half, I've been talking to coaches like Donna and realizing that even though many of you have taken the same courses and certifications, you all come to coaching with a different value. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was really interested in learning about all the baggage that we carry, like I said in the beginning, because, um, boy, my husband sometimes looks at me and he says, remember, I'm your husband of 38 years, not your husband of seven years. And it's like, oh, that's right. <laughs> but I'm still carrying that baggage around after all these years. So welcome and tell our guests a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Uh, I always pause. It's like, okay, to, to start with your story um, and it's like where to begin and those kind of things. I've also been married 38 years this year. So we have that in common. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Um, and for anybody who's been married that long, we know it is no small feat, um, that there are times where, um, you don't like each other <laughs> and so true. you continue to love each other and learn how, but that's not our subject today, but that's just a really good one. Um, I currently live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I am a mom of three married children and I have eight grandchildren. Um, and some of my favorite things to do are to play with my puppy dogs. I love reading and tea and, and talking with women all around the world. I love that. So those are some of my most fun things, um, to do. Vibrant Living International is the, um, ministry that I founded to be able to bring accelerated transformation to people across the world, especially women. Um, I, you know, those things that bug you, that cause you to do what you're doing. So one of the things that's one of my pet peeves is when we keep going around that same problem, that same mountain, and we try different approaches and we try different things and we read different books and all of these things, but we can't seem to quit looking at our husband like he was the guy who we, he, when we were married seven years kind right. of a thing. And why do, you know, I'm working with women in serious trauma and abuse and they've been in counseling for years and years and it's not getting better. That's what is fuels my fire, I guess is another way of saying it is that's one of the things that um, has always bothered me. I have my own difficult childhood. Um, at the age of 15, I became a mother. Um, it was a non-consensual, a whole messy story that I won't get into that ha happened when I was 14 and my daughter was born when I was 15. Um, and so remember where you were when you were 15? <laughs> Um, I sort of remember, like, <laughs> you know, but, but it's thinking about being a mom at, at, at that age. Um, I think that was ninth grade, you Just know, yep. in high school, you know, and thinking about all of a sudden I'm a mom and figuring out what does that look like? So 
when I say those years were hard, I can't really find the adjectives and even swear words don't work. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. <laughs> um, but to say that they were hard. And so that little girl was filled with shame and embarrassment and fear and anger, insecurities, lots of emotions. I mean, what teenager doesn't have lots of emotions? Right. Um, and I've got this new little bundle in my arms wondering how in the world am I going to make this work? Um, and the things that I have learned over the years and how and the different things that I've been through in my life has helped me to be able to learn how to turn our baggage into luggage and really create a life we love. One of my clients who had been in coaching for 20 years so. I'll give it a try. I've tried everything else. I mean, we're talking all kinds of medication, all sure. kinds of treatment, all kinds of stuff. And we worked together for, um, I think it was almost two years, but at, at the end of the first year, I asked her, I said, so you're different. What happened? What's the difference? And one of the things she said is with, with counseling, which saved my life, by the way, she said, I needed it, but we kept talking about coping mechanisms, way to cope with the problem, the way to cope with this, the way to cope with that. And you taught me how to obliterate the problem. So it wasn't a problem anymore that I need to learn how to cope with. And that's what I want to bring and I have a program called turn your baggage into luggage, which is where we came up with that right. um, phrase. Um, and I have other programs that follow those usually, or depending on where you find yourself in your life. But my passion is let's quit carrying these stuff around by now. Those bags are pretty stinky. Wouldn't you say yep. it's I like, think, you know, <laughs> it, it is so interesting because as women, we often think we're the only one amongst all of our friends and family um, who have this baggage because everybody else looks like they're well put together. Mm. Now they're looking at us probably the same way. Oh, Karen, you have no baggage. Look at you. Yeah. You know, you're doing everything that you want to do. And that may be true today that I don't have any baggage, but depending on what situation I might get into later today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that baggage just like reappears unless like your um, client said, you taught her how to get rid of that burden um, and how to cope with it. And I'm not even sure that we necessarily get rid of it. I think it's sometimes there to remind us, hey, you don't want to go there anymore. Yeah. Um, and that's but, why I but love it's not doing... a trigger anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, we've learned, hey, when that right. starts to come about, this is what I can do. Right. Um, and that's why this has been such good energy for me, having coaches on like yourself who come in and do things just a little bit differently. But the reality of it is most of us who do coaching or her, who are coach advocates like myself, we've, we've experienced yeah. the garbage and maybe it started in childhood. Maybe it started a little bit later. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Um, we don't want to be burdened down. So give me a little hint if you can, because I don't want to give your whole coaching practice away in this podcast. But if I came to you and told you that, um, you know, I've just been trying to please my husband 100% for the last 38 years. And I give you certain, I, you know, criteria that I think he wants. And mm -hmm. I want our listeners to know something. If you talk to your spouse, a lot of the time, you won't carry so much baggage around. I happen to be one that at least in the first 20 years mm -hmm. of our 38, I didn't discuss it with him. But I come to you and I give you this whole laundry list, Donna. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> Tear it up? <laughs> uh, no, I usually, when after I hear 
you know, I'm so sorry that you had this struggle with your husband and having difficulty pleasing him, which makes you feel insecure. And then you probably compare yourself to other women who are seem to have it all together. And is that right? And so you would nod your head and right. and say, yes, that's right. And so then my next question is always, so what would you like instead? If you could just for this moment, wave a magic wand and could create whatever life you would like, what would that look like? And from that place of finding out what they, you know, most women have trouble in that place, right? Because we have been, you remember you're a people pleaser, so you don't even know what you want. Right. One of my favorite movies to describe this. I don't know if you watched runaway bride with yes, Julia yes. Roberts, yep. the egg scene. Mm -hmm. Um, she's sitting in the restaurant and she's got four or five different kinds of eggs, you know, eggs, Benedict scrambled, poached, boiled, um, fried and over easy. And, you know, all the kinds and she's tasting of them. And she said, and they go, what are you doing? She says, I'm trying to figure out what kind of eggs I liked when I was with Fred. I liked this one. When I was with Mike, I liked this one. When I was with so-and-so, I liked this one. What do I like? And she didn't even know. And so many of the times that's, you know, I, I asked that question, but they, we struggle with giving ourselves permission to say what we want. We're exactly. caretakers. We take care of our husbands, our kids, our world, our everything. Um, and so we have trouble all saying that giving ourselves permission to say what we want but we can't begin to turn our baggage into luggage until I know what that's supposed to look like. What do I want my luggage, if you were using that analogy, to look like? What kind of life would I love? And dealing with uh, it's nobody's going to lose anything uh, anyway. So that's my next step is helping people to identify if you could have what you want, what would it be? And, you know, it's interesting because I've always been a people pleaser. I thought it was everything that I always wanted to be. And I like pleasing people, but I've now learned that I need to do it on my terms, not, you know, be on call for everybody. But when I was in corporate America, um, I had a manager who once a week would call us all into her office on Friday mornings. We'd go around the room and it was all about talking about either our favorite food, our favorite book, our favorite music, whatever. And um, I probably was 20 years the senior in that group. And they would all go around the group and, you know, they were talking about current music. I wasn't into current music. Mm -hmm. So when it came to me, it would be like, yeah, I don't know, nothing. You know, there's nothing special. Same thing when it came to food. Um, there's a lot of things I like, but I'm not a foodie. So if you were to ask me even today, what I like, I can give you a whole list, but it's to them, it wasn't special. It was like, come on, come up with something better. And so after about a month or two, I said to my manager, I don't want to come to the Friday meetings. And she said, why? And I said, because obviously I don't know anything about myself. And I'm not going to learn it in that room. And she said, well, I'm sorry. As long as you work here, you have to come to the Friday meetings. It was the worst day of my week. Mm. Once I left corporate America, all of a sudden, I could tell you what foods I liked, what music I liked, what books I liked, what actors or actresses. It just like would roll off my tongue. And I realized I was allowing the culture in that environment to control mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So if I were to come to you and say to you, you know, how do I stop this? You know, I want to work here, but I'm miserable. <laughs> oh, you're not giving me easy questions. Are you? I know I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I would want, I would bring up from the story you told me is the appearance of me saying, I like Billy Joel um, music and everybody's like, who's Billy Joel? Yep. That kind of thing. Yep. And is what you made that mean about you 
And it was rejection. It was culture feeling rejection. And, but if you had said differently, oh, one of my favorites, Billy Joel. Well, who's Billy Joel? You don't know who Billy Joel is? What's the matter with you? You need to go figure out who Billy Joel is because you're missing one of the biggest artists ever. That would have been said and and it would have changed the whole atmosphere because you changed. Makes a big difference. Absolutely. And so that's the biggest thing is, is that we, we're not, we don't understand is we're creating the experience of what we actually believe about ourselves or what we let other people put on us. Right. As you um, stated uh, earlier is the comparison thing, the rejection thing. One of my favorite definitions of rejection is rejection actually equals somebody's opinion. Think about how many different cars there are, how many different art kinds there are, how many different clothing, hairstyles, music, um, all this stuff. And everybody has an opinion about what, what do you mean you don't like country music or rock and roll or what's the matter with you? Well, it's their opinion. It doesn't exactly. mean something's a matter with me because I don't like the same things you do or it's a, it's a, and so when, when we feel rejection, if we can pause and say, that's their opinion, doesn't mean we might learn or improve or grow if we're getting criticized in some way, but if I can also put it in the filter of their opinion, not necessarily does it make it true about me. The same thing with childhood stuff. You're stupid. You never amount to anything. You're a pain in my, why were you ever born? Um, Can't you do anything right? All the stuff that we probably heard some form of that. Um, Just because they said it, I don't have to make it true for me today. And walking people through, you know, me just saying that once doesn't make it all go away, but walking people through a reinforcement so that that becomes a new belief system, that rejection equals the opinion of someone, not necessarily making it truth about me, um, has helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women. Oh, and I'm sure it does. And that's why I usually will tell uh, individuals who contact me after a podcast, you know, oh, that made me feel so good. Now I'm ready to move on. And it's like, well, I hope so, but it doesn't take just one podcast and hearing, you know, one person's story. That may be the spark to say, Hey, I can take my life back. I can be sitting in a circle. And when it comes time for me to describe my favorite food, I can get all excited and tell you how much I like Chinese food and my favorite dish in Chinese food and become animated with it that Mm -hmm. if you don't like it, that's okay. Because maybe I didn't like what you just said either. Right. But we have to gain that confidence. And um, I think coaching does it more than, at least for me, than any therapy I've ever been in. Because in the therapy, um, I was made to face those demons. And that's how they were taught to me. Those are demons. And so in my mind, I have these nasty looking creatures in my head. Whereas when I've been working with coaches, it's, well, what are you saying? How do you want to see it differently? What Mm -hmm. can What do you think you can do? You're not telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. And that makes a whole difference. Um, In the last 10 years, I feel like um, I'm now 16 years old, reliving my life, but living it the way I'm enjoying it. Yes. So when you started coaching, um, what made you decide that, hey, I need to take my experience and help others. Is it the people pleaser in you or was it more than that? Um, well, I have always been, or women have always been drawn to me to tell me their problems um, and learning how to handle that. Um, I remember that first happening when I was in my twenties 
um, where people would be saying, I can't believe I'm telling you this. I've never told anyone this. And I would be helping them, supporting them, letting them cry, all whatever I was capable at, at the age that it was occurring. So I've been coaching and mentoring women for a very long time. Um, so it is something that I was naturally gifted and drawn to. And about 10 years ago, I had a um, job situation change. I was let go from a job to the, I tell that whole story. It was just put it mildly. I was devastated. Um, but through that, I began to pray and say, what would you want to do if you could do anything you wanted was one of those moments. And that's how Vibrant Living was born out of that process of figuring out, well, this the thing that I love the most. What I saw was a red thread going through my life where I was always mentoring. We didn't call it coaching then. Right. Mentoring women in, in some nonprofits, it was called discipling, depending upon where, what genre you were in. But it was this red thread. And that was when I felt the most alive, the most in my sweet spot, the most, it was ease um, and all of that. And I'm like, so how do I do that? What can I do today that's that? And somebody said, well, that's coaching. And I'm like, I'm not a football coach screaming at people on the (laughs) sideline. I had no idea that there was this. Um, And so anyway, that's how, that's how vibrant living was born out of all of this process. So it was a passion. That's, it wasn't people pleasing. Now I've learned how to take uh, people's appearance of rejection because they don't like what you say. They don't like you didn't, you didn't make it all better all the time or whatever. Um, in the beginning, uh, that was all personal, you know, something's wrong with me. I'm not good enough. So I've definitely grown over the years, as well as, as a coach in that capacity, because remember I was started out extremely insecure. And so learning how to help people and not take whatever happens personal is something that we all have to learn no matter what walk of life we're in, because we want to, we always want to make it about us. And it, it rarely is, you know, you are, you're hitting the nail on the head. Um, My son took a a new job, moved out of town um, and went in with certain expectations. In fact, those expectations were in black and white on a piece of paper. Um, And he walked in and from day one, they basically tore up the paper um, Mm -hmm. and they said, no, everything's changed. And in the beginning, he felt extremely rejected. And he called home one day and he said, you know, I don't know how to handle this. And I said, basically what you did. um, Okay. If you could make it different, what would you do? And his first reaction is, oh, mom, that's a stupid question to ask me. I have no idea. And I said, okay, that's fine. You don't have an idea. Call me back about two hours later. And he described to me what he could do. I said, then try it. See if that works. And he tried it for about two weeks. It was sort of working. But the other person who was really in his face, making things unbearable, um, wasn't going to change, but he kept changing. But then he realized one day into the fourth week, I'm not who I'm supposed to be. I'm changing to make this situation right. And he said, so this situation isn't for me. The reason I bring that up is so many of us, um, we find a coach, we start working through our issues. We're not totally honest with ourselves. Um, and we start making changes, some that are good for us, but some that we're hoping is going to change that other person. And yeah. the bottom line is we're not going to change the other person. We can only change ourselves. Right. And so, you know, you make it to a point and say, you know what? This situation isn't good for me. I need to get out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know so many of us are afraid of that today because we all need our jobs. We all need to put food on our table. Or if it's between you and a relative or a good friend, you don't want to lose that relationship. But sometimes you have to take that 
step back and find out and please yourself more than the other person. Yeah. It's when you're being authentically you. Um, there are a lot of adverse situations where we can learn and, um, and grow a lot of, of, um, times I'll say, okay, why did that person push my button so much? And being able to, what beliefs were you believing about yourself when they pushed your buttons? Um, and I'm not talking about continuing to work in toxic, toxic environment, but, just in everyday situations, we can learn a lot about, okay, well, that bothered me. Why did that bother me? And begin to be authentically, am I believing something that I don't really want to happen? Um, but learning to be, the more authentic we can be, um, and I think that there's something to staying to difficult situations that in my grandmotherly opinion, a lot of the youth today, because I didn't want to do it either when I was young. Um, I don't, I, we want to, uh, as humans, we want to avoid pain at all costs. Right. Um, I remember when my first daughter, remember how young I was, <laughs> was born and I, I was in transition and I said, I've changed my mind. I don't want to do this today. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> I love and, and now that seems hilarious but I was totally serious right. I have changed my mind I don't want to do this <laughs> I and then there's no that. going there's no going back you know right. you're <laughs> but sometimes we have to go through some adversity and it isn't always bad to go through adversity because we can learn and grow and become better so it's not automatically, not that four weeks was automatically running. I'm just using this as right, sure. up in my heart is, is sometimes we have to stick to the, uh, the adversity and that we can learn and grow. And it doesn't mean I'm not being authentically me um, through that process. Be, but if something isn't your thing and it isn't right for you, giving yourself permission that there's something better and there's wisdom on how to do that. Begin exactly. to look before you leap, begin to plan, begin to see where else you might want to go before you just chuck it all and walk away. Exactly. That shows some maturity in being able to do that as well. But we will be, we will be the most happy and people will actually know us when we are authentic and not being the person that they think they want us to be. And that's especially true in marriage, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> very much so. Um, <laughs> and that, that's a story for another day. But, you know, I love what you said about when we are authentic, um, we can identify more of what we want, but people around us truly can relate to us better. They may not like us. They may like us. Um, on the weekends, I do IT work at a big box store. And um, I let my clients there know that um, this is who I am. Um, you know, just because I'm 72 doesn't mean that I don't know information technology. I do. That's why I'm here. I don't hang it over their head like I'm superior, but don't look at me as if, you know, you're a dinosaur. Um, and I find that when I'm that way with individuals, it's just so much better. And I'm willing to learn from them. Right. So like the average um, client that I'm working with there is probably 19, 20 years old. Um, they could almost be my grandchild, mm -hmm. but they talk to me like I'm their peer because coaching has helped me get into that frame of mind that I'm capable, but you know what? There's always something new to learn. Yes. Um, and I see other people in my company that do the same thing that I do. And they're just toughing it out. It's like, I can't get these young people to listen to me. Well, but are you listening to them? Do you hear yeah. what they're saying? You know, yeah. but not all of us can do that. Yeah, one well, of so, the that's something that you help individuals with because that's part of their baggage. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things is, is if you don't like how the world is treating you, look in the mirror because most likely you have believed the same thing about yourself 
And so most likely those people that are having trouble getting the, the younger people to listen believe they don't have the same, the same benefit to it. We have a chip on our shoulders. Yep. And so it, um, it's so true. I love so, that story. So how do our listeners find you? I know we have your website. Um, is there any other special way that they can learn more the about best, you and then connect? The best way is my website. Um, I, I have an unusual name, Donna Tashton. So that's on social medias, um, most of them. Uh, so you can find me there. I'm predominantly on Facebook, but I'm on other platforms as well. But my website is the letter I vibrant um, There's free books and resources, blogs, all my podcasts are there as well. Um, lots of different resources that are available to, as well as scheduling a consultation, if that works, if that's something that you would like to dive into more. Well, and I think, you know, I'm not going to tell everybody out there that they have to have a coach, um, but you at least have to learn how to coach yourself and sort of take a step back at times and say, is that the way I wanted this to be? Is that what I wanted to say? And am I happy within myself? Because for many years, I was waiting for everybody else around me to make me happy. Yeah. Um, and if it weren't for my big brother, who one day said, said to me, you can be miserable for the rest of your life, or you can stop crying and find something you like about yourself and build upon it. And it was like, you know, I never want to talk to you again, brother. Uh, I'm hanging up the phone because you just made me the most unhappy person in the world. But yet within 24 hours, I figured out what he was saying. And it took me a long time to really get there, but I worked at it. Um, yeah. So for anybody who's feeling like, hey, I'll never be happy or I don't know what happiness is, um, you know, go to Donna's website, get the free materials, uh, do a consultation. If Donna's not the right coach for you, you know, there are plenty of coaches out there. And as a coach advocate, I will help lead you. One of the questions I'll ask is, why isn't this one person the right one for you? So right. we can identify that and hook you up to somebody else that might be a better fit. One of the things that I was thinking when you were saying that is um, every person that is highly successful has a coach um, because it, br it brings accelerated transformation. Yes, we can DIY it. In fact, we're master DIYers, you know, and if you think about, you know, trying to do something that you saw on Pinterest, right? <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of times trying to read a book and then implement it is like that. It's oh, like, absolutely. okay, that's not the way that I thought this was going to turn out. And um, the consultation with me is absolutely free. It's complimentary and being able, and like I said, if I'm not the right fit, finding the right person for you, but I don't advise DIYing it. Find some way to get the resources absolutely. unless you want to have years and years of hard of trying to figure it out. Somebody's already paid the road. Let's learn how to do it easy. It doesn't We're have so to be ready. hard. It doesn't have to take forever. Let's learn how to do it easy so that we can be the best version of ourselves. As I love to say it, be all that God created us to be, to be able to live to our fullest and to have an incredible life instead of feeling like, ugh, this is a struggle. So I look forward to anyone listening, having a conversation with you and making a new friend. That is wonderful. And I will agree. Every time I've tried to do, do it on my own, I get hijacked. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why right now I'm doing a positive intelligence um, pod. And for those of you who want to know more about that, I can send you the information. But it's, it shows me that the things that I want to do um, I let other things get in the way. And so I've needed this refresher to help me stop my saboteurs and um, figure out a way to say, calm down, you can do this. Um, and none of us are perfect. So it's really nice to have a coach or um, a coach that is doing a group so that you can see that you aren't alone mm -hmm. and anything is possible that you want. 
So Donna, Absolutely. I want to thank you for joining us today. And um, to all of our listeners, if you want the information about Donna, it will be in the show notes. So don't worry if you didn't get it uh, during the conversation and um, check out her website and go for a free consultation. Have a great day, Donna. Bye. Thank now. you. My pleasure.